smoke when we all celebrate success. So now we. Hey guys, welcome to the first project update of 2018. You'll tell from all the stuff on the floor that I've been shopping again. So what I've managed to do is acquire complete braking hardware from a more modern city. And that's what you see here. So this is the new booster on the bracket with the linkage and then this guy here will attach to the brake pedal. Jazz, what's up guy? What's up guy? This will attach to the brake pedal inside the vehicle. So I've done a, a very basic test fit. Everything lines up. These bolt holes and the bolt holes at the back of the bracket all line up with the uh, holes existing on the firewall already. So what this means is basically this is a straight bolt in. However, Sorry, Jess. Let me just get a better angle. You'll see on the top of the bracket here and here, there are basically four bolt holes. Now, let me show you what happens there. Pretty self explanatory. So, once the initial bracket is mounted here, I need to drill two holes here. Ditto on this side. So once this is bolted in, I need to drill two holes here. And that'll just tighten everything up. And that'll get the, uh, the brakes hardware sorted. So that's step one. Now as I mentioned in a previous vlog, and this is the new one I bought, so this is now going to go in the cupboard as a spare. So you'll see here, we've got just two linkages where we used to have four. So I'll show you on this brake booster what actually needs to happen. I'll show you on this guy because I'm going to be using the lines from this one because they're just a bit neater than the other one. So this now is the old style booster which I don't need if I'm going to be using the modern one. So now I've gone from having no booster to one like the old type and two of the new type. So now this one comes from I think it was a 2005-2006 city and you'll see this is just when they changed. So this looks like the old master cylinder except that it only uses two and not the four for the brake lights. So this is when they started adjusting and tidying up what was going on with the booster. So this will be the 19 centimeter and that'll be the 22. Ditto with that guy up there, that's the 22. So now you see they run the brake lines nice and neat, tuck it under. So I think the front one is the right hand side. And no wait, this is the right hand side, this is the left hand side. And the shorter run is the left hand side. And this is still ATE, where these ones are all FTE. And these ones have the offset master cylinder, where this one is still compatible with the old style. So that's quite important, and I'll tell you why a little bit later. So I'm going to be using these lines. So the way the system works, guys, assuming this is mounted in the car, these lines go to these split it. So you'll see the top, this line here, comes from the master cylinder into the splitter. This line shoots off to sort out the front um, brake caliper. This is mounted to the vehicle, I'll show you. So they would sit, so these are the old brake lines left and right. So these splitters here will mount here. There's two of them, they mount here, next to each other. So this will sit on the cylinder, and this will move over to the brake line, and the caliper on that side. So now these large attachments here, that's where the new brake lines will screw into. So I'll put a still of what the setup actually looks like, just to explain it a bit more clearly, because 
I think I might have uh, not done such a good job. So you see, I've got basically all four brake lines that I would need to replace on this vehicle to then be running all new brake lines. Why is that possibly what I'm going to end up doing? So you'll see the old brake lines, because of the way the this, this system ran, went behind the steering rack. So, not such a problem, because the engine and everything is going to be in, you're not going to see what I would have to do here. But I'd have to bend these, cut them off, and use a brake flaring tool to sort of uh, reflare new um, brake lines so that I can plug them into the bottom of those splitters. Potentially an option, I might jack the car up this weekend and see if I can move these old brake lines out from behind the steering rack because this steering rack is a nightmare to get in or out with the motor in or not. It's a flipping nightmare. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and leave this in. I might have to take out two of the um, little like plastic clips that hold the uh, brake lines in place, two or three, and then try to feed them through without damaging them too much. But if I damage them, not a problem. I've got new ones. So I'm going to use riv nuts, uh, six mil riv nuts. I'm going to drill holes here, put the riv nut in, use the tool to pull them back, and that'll just stand the um, splitters slightly off this lower wing. Like I say, um, I'm explaining it to you now, but you'll see what I'm talking about when the uh, sorry when the uh, stills are up, and that would basically then get us good at, good to go with the brake hardware back in the vehicle finally, and uh, that's that's quite an important step. So that's something we're going to work towards tonight. Is I want to I want to put the linkage in. I need to clean it a bit, bolt it in place. I want to mark where I need to drill here and here. I'm going to take a punch and just punch an indentation where I've marked. And then from the top, I may not do that tonight because it is, it's already 8.30 at night. But once I can see where I need to drill, I'll take a very small drill bit and drill straight down and then expand them out to the right size. I don't want to make too big a hole, but basically once I've got the holes in here, I'll put a washer and uh, I just need bolts because these things are threaded. There's a nut welded on the inside here, so I just need to thread a, screw, uh, sorry, a bolt into these nuts. And then we're good to go. That's, that sorts the brake issue out, it's updated. Vehicle is, uh, you know, it'll be easier to get spares because this booster you cannot get anymore. So, so what happened here guys, as per the last vlog, I bought that not being aware of the change in master cylinder and no one at VW told me that this was the change they assumed I was running a modern city they just gave it to me so now I couldn't use it with the old setup that was going to become a problem so then I was going to buy the flaring tool and make up new lines and all the rest of it and then this stuff came up so I bought this this stuff first so I'm going to put that like I say in the cupboard I'll use this setup exactly how it is I might just clean it up a little bit bolted straight in good to go this I bought from mate now he doesn't need the master cylinder he wants the old one so he doesn't need the bottle either I'm gonna take these lines off because he can't use them anyway put all that in the cupboard as a spare and then I've got a spare uh, sort of a bracket and linkage system as well so it works out great for me he gets the booster it sorts him out his booster is currently leaking brake fluid and it's smoking and the car doesn't run or well, it doesn't stop it runs perfectly it doesn't stop so um, yeah, so I'll get those nice neat brake lines. When the guys took those other ones out with the splitters, I kind of messed things up a little bit. I could just bend them straight, but these are the proper factory curve. And that's kind of what, I, what the, the look I want uh, is going to be. So I'll put those guys in and not those guys. I'm still going to need to bend these a little bit to get them to line up with the splitters. But basically I want to get this stuff in first before I go drilling into my wing and putting rib nuts and all the rest of it. So I'm going to do a bit of a mock-up. Then, I mentioned ages ago that my blower is completely buggered, completely stuffed. So this is the old one that can actually go in the bin. However, this new one is 
newer but not perfect. So I am going to salvage some bits off this one to sort of spruce this one up a bit. What am I going to salvage? Well, the clips on this guy are rusty. I might soak them in some, some vinegar and just uh, shine them up a bit and see how they turn out. This guy is really rusty. Clean this up. It's got a new heater core. So that's a plus. All the wiring is intact. And I got all of this stuff as well. But there is a still an issue. Rubber, I'm not really concerned about. I'm going to take that off. I'll use some foam rubber tape. Kind of like this stuff here, just to make a new grommet there. But the problem is twofold. So, on the Golf, you can blow the air, be it hot or cold. I think it goes face, face feet, feet, demister. So this flap here is part of that system. It's a mechanical system where the flap will move up and down depending and there's another flap on the bottom inside that will direct the air you know, to, to the side and to the floor. So this flap door is actually broken. So I need to see if I can make up a plan here to get this working. I thought I could salvage that one but that one's also broken. The other issue is the foam that sort of creates a seal here is disintegrated, it's gone. So, and the same is true in my cabria. Um, all the uh, air vents, flaps, and the, the main one, the, sure, I forget the German name for it, but the blend door basically, that directs the air around the cabria's air system has also gone out. I've had black foam flying at me in small chunks for, for months now. It stopped, but I think that just means that uh, you know, more will come out later. So for now, the bit that has come loose has come through the car and uh, created quite a bit of mess. So to fix that on the Cabrio, it's an entire dashboard out. In this car, it's the same story, except the dashboard's already out. So if I can find a material to recreate that seal at the top, I'm going to open this box and do the, the blend door inside as well. Um, so if I can find a material that will fix this, I can probably use the same stuff to fix the Cabrio at some stage. Now, the Cabrio is currently not running. The voltage regulator on its alternator went. Now, if it was a Bosch, no problem, because it could have taken this out and slapped it in. But it's not a Bosch, it's a Valio. And no one in South Africa stocks parts for this damn thing. So, I've had to go to VW and order one from Germany and it's two weeks away. So the car's been down a week already. Um, I'm driving Old Faithful, my Land Rover. Um, so yeah, should hopefully get it. I'm hoping to get it in the middle of next week or towards the end. What I am going to do uh, tomorrow night is take the battery out of Garfield and stick it on my battery maintainer. Which is this guy up here. Not the trickle charger. I'm going to slap it on this for a while and just test the battery because I was convinced that the problem was the battery. Then we went and did a test. No, it wasn't the battery. The battery wasn't getting enough voltage from the alternator to charge while I was driving. So the vehicle is running perfectly while the motor is running. The moment I turned the motor off, everything died. And um, I would need someone to jump me to get me going again, which was getting quite irritating and uh, not something I want to live with long term. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's about the only update for the uh, Cabrio at the moment. Um, so I'm going to get stuck into this, guys, because once the brake is in and the lines are all connected, I can clean this up and put this in. And then at some point, I'm going to have to stop delaying this and uh, get stuck in, fix a bloody handbrake, finish the soundproofing install, and then run the electrics. So this is the year I want to get this guy running. It's been long overdue. I'm, I'm getting really impatient now. I'm going to start trying to invite mates around to just kind of push, push, push and get this thing done. So yeah, brakes need to go in and it's the same thing I've been saying vlog after vlog. Brakes need to go in, engine and gearbox, wiring, get the car running, started. Now you'll see a lot of the brake stuff is dirty. I think it's towards the beginning or middle of last year I mentioned I'm going to run methylated spirits through the brakes first. So that's going to flush all the dust, dirt and gunk out the lines 
out the calipers, flush all the old, you know, brake particulate and powder and stuff. In theory, there shouldn't be any. If you remember, I've completely rebuilt the front and rear brakes, but the lines in between, you know, these guys, if they're still in, or these guys, because they, they were really filthy in the scrapyard. So I want to flush the lines completely, flush the brakes. I'll blow air through that just to, uh, through each line just to dry it out, although mess will, will dry by itself uh, once in contact with air. Then I'm going to run brake fluid through, and as I'm running the car in, I'll, uh, I'll flush the brakes again. So I've got enough brake fluid in there to do that, I've got it meths and all the rest of it. So it'll be basically new, everything will be clean, good to go. I'd like to do that with the fuel as well, I'd like to do that with the radiator. So there's going to be a lot of sort of repeat work that is necessary. I don't want any mechanical problems with this vehicle. I want this thing to, so if I take it on a breakfast run, I don't want to get to the breakfast run or break down on the way to the end destination and then have to be towed or, or whatever. That would be just embarrassing. <laughs> um, especially after so long, jeez, the hype around this car and the local car clubs is, it would be really embarrassing if this thing broke down. So guys, I'm going to leave it there, um, I'm going to get stuck in, I may not film because I prefer to work um, and if I can finish tonight, I'll show you guys the end result. If I don't finish tonight, obviously this will be the end of the vlog. Uh, I need to get my felling axe out of this, I was going to sharpen it, but I need to clean it up, get this thing sharp, we've got a lot of tree felling to do in the garden this year. So yeah, let's get the brakes in, let's take all that stuff off, get the bracket in, mark, drill, and let's see how far we get. If I don't see you again, cheers for now guys, thank you so much for watching, I see I've got a couple of new subscribers, thank you so much, a couple of you reached out to me on Instagram, thanks again for the support, I really, really appreciate all the uh, input I'm getting from you guys, it uh, just helps motivate me to make better content. And uh, yeah, let's leave it there, I'm going to get stuck in, and cheers for now guys, hey guys. So, looks like we've got a part two here. So, let's do a quick review before I go through what's going on here. I took the old style booster off, the bracket that's in the vehicle now. Gave it a bit of a clean up, I'm probably going to give it a bit of a spray with some uh, satin black paint just to patch up these areas. I test fitted the old style master cylinder. Perfect fit, good to go. So. My mate can take this booster, 100% confident he can fit his existing master cylinder onto, onto this thing. I have offered him this in case he needs it. He's confident it's just his old booster. So if it works, sorted. Then I've got all of this. This is all the old mounting hardware. It's the linkage for the uh, pedal. I've got this old battery on maintenance just now. I I've, I've, want to see now this thing's going to test it and then charge it up. This is actually the original bat well, A battery from this vehicle. But this is uh, distracting me from what we're doing here. So back to uh, back to what we've got here. So once the old booster was off, I bolted all of this stuff in. I hooked up the linkage to the brake pedal on the inside so that this is all connected, guys. It's bolted in nice and tight. Inside as well. Everything, like I said, everything lined up. So I put that bracket on the inside, bolted everything up, sorted. This guy is not fitted yet. I'm probably not going to fit them until after the engine and everything is in. However, actually, having just said that, I can probably get away with fitting the booster. I'll just take the master cylinder off so that we can drop the engine and gearbox in, and then I'll put the master cylinder back on and hook up the brake lines. I just don't want it sticking out like that when we lower the engine and gearbox. You know, I'm going to have a load leveler, but I'm not sure about the angles to get in there. So. Also, these brake lines will have to all be neatened up before the engine and gearbox can go in. So I haven't drilled. You'll see I haven't drilled here or here. Now, there's not a lot of space. I wanted to put a punch in to mark. This side, I might still be able to do something here. Let's put the light on here. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it, but this side's going to be impossible. So... I'm going to have to measure very carefully on this other setup. Take a very small drill bit, 
sharp metal one. Drill a pilot hole and then expand, expand to such time that I can fit these bolts. I don't have washers, I may need to go get some washers. I may not need washers, but it's nice to have them in there just to spread the load a little bit. So, um, lucky I've got the bolts, so it's just a matter of sorting this out, measuring carefully, drilling, bolting, and then that's complete. That's done. Sorted. Then I can get cracking over here. So, like I mentioned, I've got the brake lines I want to use, so that's, that's another major plus. I've got the splitters in place. I've got, uh, oh, I need to get the river nuts and the tool to fit those. But I am very happy with this result, guys. This is for the first uh, evening of the year. This is a lot of good progress. This has pushed me quite, quite far forward. So, <clears throat> it means now that I have a complete spare. It means I can chuck that old booster away now. You'll see I've emptied the bin finally, and I'm starting to chuck this the old radiator core for the uh, for the heater, the old water bottle, some loose bits and pieces. So that guy can be chucked. I might give that to Nick with this booster in case he ever wants to get that thing refurbished when he has time. I'm not going to use it. I don't need it. He can have it. So that clears a whole box of stuff. All of this stuff will disappear. Once the brakes are done, I can then start with that guy. Then all of this, this entire box, plus some boxes under the stairs will disappear. All of this stuff will disappear, free up some table space. I need to get the gearbox on this sucker this weekend. I'll have to get uh, some help to do that. Um, so yeah, then, it, then it's actually off the floor, and I can start cleaning it. I want to prep all the hell out of it. Leave it to soak. Wire wheel it. And then, uh, yeah, we can hopefully get, uh, we may not need paint. Um, I just want to see what it looks like once it's clean. And if I don't need paint, I'm not going to paint it. Um, I'll just clean it up. We get all the clutch and flywheel and stuff sorted. It gets cracking on the engine. But yeah, I'm busy digging through this stuff now because <clears throat> as we start moving forward now, this year, certain bits of these pieces are going to start disappearing and I'm going to get the space back. All of this stuff, all these packets, all of this stuff ends up in the vehicle. Um, this thing I think is damaged so this might end up in the bin. I need to run some water through it and just see. So this is the, this is the core I'm going to use. This one's possibly buggered. This I think is the old master cylinder so that's probably going to end up in the bin. But yeah guys, I'm very happy with where we are now. Pedals fit fitted. So that's, well, fitted, it's connected. So that's a nice move forward. Fitted this little guy, just because I was here and it was there. That's done. I also want to clean up the engine mountings, mount those back onto the vehicle. I'm just trying to do little odds and ends. Every little bit helps. That's why I did this sucker. So yeah, the ultimate goal, get this thing running by September. Shakedown cruise, adjustments, and then I can start driving it to work once a week. I cannot wait. Every Friday, it's my day in the office for admin, catch up, internal meetings, drive this baby. I have a dedicated parking bay now, so you'll be undercover, safe from hail, rain, sleet, snow. So excited about that as well. So yeah guys, once again, thank you so much for the support. Thanks for the guys who are, who are taking the time out to uh, contact me on the various different social medias I'm part of. It really does give me a boost when someone, uh, you know, takes the effort to uh, contact me and just to tell me that they're enjoying the videos, enjoying the content. Subscribing as well, always helpful. Share, you know, like the videos, dislike the videos. Like I say, it all helps. But yeah, it's, it's just very positive to be able to engage with a fan and just uh, talk to you guys. And just know that you guys are actually enjoying what I'm producing. You know, I'm doing this, like I say, as a hobby for myself. Um, but yeah, if it's helping other people, if it's inspiring you to build a, a vehicle of your own, or solve, if it helps solve a problem that you're having, then that's even better. That's, that's the bigger reward for me at this point. But yeah, let's, uh, let's carry on. It's 11 o'clock now. I need to uh, head upstairs and go to bed. 
I would much rather stay in here with this thing. I'm starting to get really attached to her again. Mm. There's a lot of work to do still, guys, but like I said, every little bit helps. Anyway, cheers for now, guys. Enjoy. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more and be kept up to date, please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to my channel. With your help, we can get this project complete and move on to the next one. Bye for now.